Hi all, welcome to our presentation on advancing human AI complementarity, the impact of user expertise and algorithmic tuning on joint decision making. This is work done by Shreya, Corey, Carrie, Besa, Divya, Pietro, Vani, Libby, and Gabby. First off, what's wrong with current AI systems? We know that AI has long been used to support complex decision-making tasks, including legal tasks, such as using Compass to assess recidivism risk, and medical scenarios, such as using computer assistance to improve uh, interpretation of images and clinical care in the field of pathology. But AI systems and models are often trained from historical data, and they're not often optimized for collaborative goals, which leads to inferior performance in comparison to human alone or AI alone. There are even instances where the AI did not lead to any improvement on the overall performance. So in this work, we set to expand and explore the role of AI recommendations on human AI performance by focusing on two things, algorithmic tuning and human expertise. We asked three questions in this work. First, what is the impact of tuning the true positive and true negative rates of an AI system on human AI team performance? Next, what's the role of human expertise and predictive tuning in enabling complementary human AI systems? And finally, what strategies do users use to, uh, when working with an AI assistant in a decision-making task? And how do their perceptions of the assistant impact the overall human AI team performance? In this uh, presentation, we'll largely focus on the first two questions, so we invite you to read the rest of our paper to find out more. Now I will pass it on to Gabby, who will talk about stall catchers and the task. In this study, we used a modified version of stall catchers, which is an online citizen science activity. It was created by the Human Computation Institute in collaboration with Cornell University to aid in their Alzheimer's research. Users are shown a short clip of a blood vessel image from a mouse brain and are asked to decide whether the blood vessel is flowing or stalled, as you can see here. Here is a visual of our modified stall catchers task. The simulated AI assistant offers a recommendation that the participant can use to aid in their decision making. And in this example, you can see the AI pointing to the flowing option. We recruited participants from the stall catcher population, so they were all familiar with the task prior to the study. Our experiment had four stages. The first was primarily used as a warm up and users received feedback after each answer. In stage two, the feedback was removed to establish a baseline performance. We introduced the AI in stage three and participants received feedback on their answers to help gauge the accuracy of the AI. And the feedback was removed again in stage four to assess the performance of the participant in collaboration with the AI. Participants were randomly assigned to one of the experimental conditions. There was balanced high true negative rate or high true positive rate. In all conditions, the AI assistant was set to 75% accuracy. In the balanced condition, the AI was equally likely to miss flowing installed videos. And in the high true negative rate condition, the AI assistant was more likely to miss stalled vessels, which resulted in more false negatives. In the high true positive rate condition, the AI assistant was more likely to miss flowing vessels, which increased the number of false positives. In certain situations, it is important to tune the AI to limit specific error types. So in our study, we wanted to understand how the tuning of the AI impacted the overall performance of the human AI team. Our main research question involved understanding the impact of both human baseline expertise and variable algorithmic error tuning on the human AI team performance in this task. And so in order to do this, we compared stage two performance without the AI to stage four performance with the AI. And in this case, we defined performance as accuracy. And this is demonstrated visually here with a majority of the data points falling above this diagonal line, which represents equal performance in both stages. However, we ended up seeing that performance improvements alongside the AI were not consistent across all users. And we saw that a user's initial stage two baseline accuracy or performance was influencing how much they were improving by when they reached stage four. To better understand the interaction effect with stage two baseline performance, we ended up performing a two-step cluster analysis based on the user stage two accuracy. And this yielded three clusters that reflected user performance either below, which is in blue, around, which is in orange, or above, which is in green, the AI's algorithmic accuracy. And so with these clusters, we were able to observe kind of different impacts of the AI assistant on mid-level performers. We saw that some were significantly increasing while others were staying the same and others were even decreasing or degrading their 
against their initial performance when they were getting AI recommendations. In contrast, we saw that low-level users were seeing performance gains in stage four when the AI was giving them recommendations. However, they never rose above the AI accuracy level of 75%. And on the other hand, we saw that high-level performers were not impacted by the AI suggestions. And this makes sense when we consider that many of the users were already starting out better than the AI's accuracy. And so to better understand why some of these mid-performers degraded while others improved, we ended up analyzing the impact of the three assigned experimental conditions. And so as a reminder, users were given recommendations from an AI assistant that had constant accuracy, but varied in its true positive and true negative rates. And so for mid-performers, we ended up observing that a high TPR condition resulted in significantly or statistically significant gains in stage four compared to the balance in high TPR. To better understand why the high TPR condition helped these mid-performing users, we ended up comparing their baseline TNR and TPR rates, and we ended up seeing that many users had a baseline tendency towards a higher true negative rate. This means that they were de better at detecting negative cases, and in this task, that means they were better at detecting flowing videos. And so knowing that these users were biased towards being able to better detect flowing videos, this can explain why the high TPR condition was able to boost accuracy. Because these users, as we can see kind of a lot of these mid-performers that are situated in this space, because they had more knowledge at being able to detect a flowing video, when they were getting an increase correct stalled recommendation from the AI, they were able to use their own personal knowledge and reject this incorrect recommendation, which ended up allowing them to boost team accuracy above that of the AI in the high TPR condition. So with the knowledge that users had a baseline performance that favored a higher TNR rate, we ended up analyzing the impact of the three experimental tuning conditions on both the TPR and TNR performance metrics as well. And overall, we found that users were only improving in a given performance metric if their baseline performance was below that of the AI that they were working with. So for example, we can see in the left graph, in the high TPR condition, most of the users started out with a true negative rate that was higher than that of the AI they were working with. Since most of the users started out better than the AI's TNR, they didn't actually see any statistically significant gains in this performance metric. In contrast, in the same exact condition, when we look at the true positive rate, we can see that most of the users started out far below the true positive rate of the AI. And so when they worked with a very high true positive rate algorithm, they were able to see statistically significant gains in this uh, performance metric. And so overall, this suggests that there's a benefit towards working and tuning an algorithm that can complement a user's area of weakness. Most of our results in this presentation focused on performance. However, we also did a lot of analysis surrounding trust because user perceptions of the AI assistant can provide insights into whether or not folks are actually going to adopt these tools during human AI decision-making in the future. We asked users to rate their own performance and the AI's performance at the end of every stage. And with these ratings, we observed that people who rated the AI as having a higher or superior performance to their own were more likely to see accuracy gains when working as a human AI team, which is uh, seen and represented by this blue portion of the graph here. In contrast, users who rated the AI as inferior to their own performance were more likely to see degradations when working as a team in stage four, which is seen by the red portion of this graph. And so our paper contains more insights on the impact of user perceptions and mental models um, during team decision making. However, overall, we saw an important relationship between trust and performance during this task. Overall, this work has three main takeaways. First, user expertise variably influence the success of human AI teams. Most human AI studies recruit novice users, such as those from Mechanical Turk, which limits the generalizability of their results. Next, complementary AI tuning can boost user performance. So there's potential for AI systems to complement different user strengths, just not limited within the nature of a task. And finally, 
User perceptions, including those about AI performance, can influence team performance. So user perception on AI, such as lack of trust due to expertise or the mental model of an AI, can really influence the overall team performance. Thanks for watching, and here are our references.